Haha! -ha! I got it to go live, but there's only the two of us right now. So That is all that matters. That is all that matters, we're online. <laughs> we are ready to entertain. <laughs> you start saying jokes and I will go search for the other two. <laughs> oh god, I'm terrible at one-liners. <laughs> I'm gonna text them. <laughs> Okay. Where's we my are live? What? <laughs> live. We live. are live. We live. Are. We are. Living is happening. Yes. And we're going to have to be elaborate enough to make up for their absence. Another. <laughs> this is a thing that I need to have. That's my phone. They're totally just sitting there. Delighted and captured by the little dinging noise of Google Plus. <laughs> Google yeah. Plus has <laughs> thing. It's just hypnotizing again. Yeah. I'm going to copy paste this because I will need it. Actually, you know what? I don't need to look at this. They don't exist, is, is the, this, the secret That's is, nice. that it's really just going to be the two of us. All and that, 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 <laughs> we knew it would come to this. <laughs> the entire time it was a sham. <laughs> I we, was trying to trick you into reading things that I enjoy reading. No, we really just... Apparently Rachel doesn't have an invitation, question mark. Alright. We really just invited Gretchen to get her fans. You know? Because they're tuning in. So, they're here anyway. We don't need Gretchen at this point. <laughs> she was a puppet regime. And the, I don't know, convoluted metaphor was finally cast down and revealed. I don't know. Stop pressuring me. Apparently it won't let me. Can you add them? See if you can. The little orange box up in the corner. Put it all give it to go. Um, which little orange box? Uh, left corner at the top is the orange box with the shape of a person. <laughs> um, oh, I'm not sure. Along the side where the apps are. Okay, there's Gretchen. Okay. No, I'm not. I don't have that option. Oh, then I am in charge of every. And Gretchen's gone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bloody hell, we're behind schedule. <laughs> we were on air on time. That's what matters. Well, we are still on air, actually. So does that. Yeah, we're what? on air. We're just not talking about what we need to be talking. And this will forever be book. immortalized on my YouTube channel. <laughs> A book. That is a book. <laughs> we read this oh wait, book. why did I even get? Why did I not get this invite? That's really weird. I, oh. I guess because oh, I showed on. up and that was all that was necessary. But oh, I hope Rachel got it. She okay. didn't. Hold on, I'm texting her. She's not on Google Plus. God damn it. She's not because she doesn't have one. Because she's silly. Because Google is evil, apparently. Hey, do we have a link now that I can give people? Uh, yes, if you... Hold on. Alright, Michaela, we're two minutes past the line. There you go. Take that and put it in your thing. It'll embed it on your page so that it'll be on the page live so they don't even have to click anywhere. They can just watch it from your blog. That's cool. How would we be able to tell if there's people in here? Yeah, we won't. Ha ha. Oh god, no, that's that's too bad. I want to see. Oh, um, I don't actually. adoring fan. Uh, no, I lied. There's viewers up here. Zero viewers at the top, just above the video. Unless I'm the only one that can see that again. I yeah, I can't see that. You are. You'll just have to give us updates. We're at zero viewers, guys. Cool. <laughs> 
don't feel like I'm letting someone down. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm letting someone down. We're just waiting on Rachel. Yeah. That's a Rachel. That's a Rachel. <laughs> That's Gretchen's thing. This was much too complicated. <clears throat> yeah, but I finally got it. it I, I don't know what was wrong with the other one. I finally got this one to go out to the interwebs. It's we're broadcasting. It's a status company. Yeah. Oh, You're I'm live. Sorry. Are we on air? Yeah, you are. We are on air. <laughs> <laughs> My cat left me. Oh, no. Okay, so that's out to the world. So... <laughs> Wait, sounds like you're typing, yeah. so we muted your mic. Can you hear me? Yeah, it mutes while you're typing and then comes back on. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so that's out to the world. We should probably start actually doing things now that this whole thing has like five minutes of us babbling. Four minutes. Babbling is a great thing. Why did I just type that into Google? Bad Michaela's brain. Alright, let me just collect this. And look up the book so that I have it handy. Why didn't I just click my link? I don't know. I'm silly. Um, All right. Um, Oh, am I supposed to be putting my name first? I don't know. Mine was just already in there like that, so I did that. <sighs> Fine. Everybody, we all know what Rachel is, first and foremost. <laughs> that is a crazy cat alcoholic. <laughs> cat alcoholic. <laughs> Alright. I am proud of my title. But I'm not proud of the CD. The direction that you can take Rachel's subtitle are just infinite interpretations, you know? There's infinite interpretations to my subtitle? Well, like, three or four, but that's basically the same thing. Whatever you say. Oh, goodness. That's my keyboard. Don't mind that. My tea's getting cold. Yeah, mine's kind of warmish. Are we a, are we a go? Almost. Gretchen, I can't see your. What just happened? It did that to me earlier too. Okay. I I have, I have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> We're uh, really bad at this, guys. We are it's the best the at this. The first time, okay? The first time is always awkward but special. <laughs> and it's the one that everybody remembers and loves. Like, like Gretchen slapping Caleb. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is my announcer voice. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to our very first episode of Bibliomancy for Beginners. What? What? Uh, this is a weekly meeting of four college friends who like to read books and talk about them. I will let everyone introduce themselves. I guess we should start from the left and move to the right. So, Gretchen? Um, well, I'm Gretchen Homeyer. Um, I'm from the blog My Life is a Notebook. Um, if that's where you found this, then awesome. I love you. Um, and I am a freshman at Ithaca College, majoring in English and writing, with an honors minor, with the intention of going to teaching. Sounds and like you're fun. a communist dwarf. Yes, that too. That will make sense later, I promise. 
I think we're gonna skip over that part of the book. <laughs> we're just not gonna talk about it. <laughs> no, I have to talk about it. <laughs> um all right, I'm Michaela Rochilla. This is on my YouTube channel and my blog, The Pied Piper Calls, as well. Um, also, freshman slash going to be a sophomore because it's summertime. Oh, right. Yeah, that. <laughs> uh, also an English major, but I'm also an anthropology major. Um, fun things. I'm the master of ceremonies slash the main host of this this evening. All right, that's me. Let's continue. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I'm an audio production major, also at Ithaca College. Um, to my two YouTube subscribers, if you see this, you're awesome. <laughs> and I am a crazy cat alcoholic lady. And, well, that's just who I am. <laughs> the first step is acceptance. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to an alcoholic management meeting. <laughs> About a cat management. <laughs> About a cat management. <laughs> I will become an old crazy cat lady, and you guys. All right, all right, all right. I get my turn now. Okay. Let me no, have you don't. Some, just one little thing. Okay. I'm Taylor Greenwood. I am also going to be a sophomore at Ithaca College because we're sensing a pattern here. <laughs> I am just an English major because why do other things just? Uh, we'll get mine. <laughs> and um, because I don't have a blog or a YouTube, I'm just going to say I am drinking Maharaja Chai Oolong tea tonight. <laughs> what does it I'm taste like? Coffee chocolate tea. What? I am drinking Arizona green tea. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm not drinking anything because I like to dehydrate. That's okay. not really true. Yeah, totally. Little kitty. <clears throat> Alrighty. Let's continue. Uh, over the past sort of week and a half, mostly week, um, we've been reading this. Can you guys see that in frame? Because I don't have my video up. Is that in frame? Let's yeah. Ta-da! Everybody got it. Everybody got it. Um, which is The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. Um, there was some sort of like, I don't want to say, um, I don't know how to say this. They're, like, it's it's considered an adult fiction novel, but some libraries have it in the young adult section because the protagonist is young. Um, but it, I on the book it says it's written for adults, so I'm going to go with it's an adult fiction. Um, that's what it is. For those of you who haven't read the book, I'll read the Goodreads description so that you have a... Teaser, I guess. <clears throat> High in his attic bedroom, 12-year-old David mourns the death of his mother with only the books on his shelf for company. But those books have begun to whisper to him in the darkness, angry and alone. He takes refuge in his imagination and soon finds that reality and fantasy have begun to meld. While his family falls apart around him, David is violently propelled into a world that is a strange reflection of his own, populated by heroes and monsters and ruled by a faded king who keeps his secrets in a mysterious book. The Book of Lost Things. <clears throat> Taking readers on a vivid journey through the loss of innocence into adulthood and beyond, New York Times bestselling author John Connolly tells a dark and compelling tale that reminds us of the enduring power of stories in our lives. Um, now I'm going to give a disclaimer, because I just read that for the people who haven't read the book. This is a book club. We are going to be talking about the plot. If you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching. Just stop it. We actually watch anyway because we want views and we're funny. <laughs> but, but actually, can... spoilers! But actually, spoilers! <laughs> Doctor Who. Spoilers. River song moment. Spoilers, oh, sweetie. Oh, swearing. Oh, yes, <laughs> definitely also, swearing. Also, there's going to be swearing, so if you have a problem with that. Not from this also, end. Also, this book is quite gory, so... Yeah. Well, One of my talking adult... points is bestiality. Adult fiction. <laughs> adult fiction. <laughs> um, I think that's all the warnings were required by law to make. So should we get started? <laughs> required by law. Crap, there's a law. I missed the handbook. <laughs> um, I guess we should start off by giving our overall impressions, whether you liked or did not like the book. And sort of, I guess, why briefly. Start with Gretchen. 
Um, I did like the book, um, which I actually wasn't expecting because I usually, I'm like the serial YA reader here, I guess, and I don't like going to adult fiction because I usually get really bored really fast. But I didn't get bored, and I was actually like, I didn't think like for an adult book that he could write a 12-year-old that would be real. And then he was like, but no, actually, I'm not bad at this. And I went, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> And then just all of the feels at the end. Uh, like one chapter. <laughs> and um, we're gonna do favorite moments later, so I won't, I won't yeah. go there yet. Yeah. All right. Um, I liked the book. It was my choice of book this week, so I was interested in it to begin with, and it lived up to my expectations. It was good by me. I'll talk more about other stuff later. Well, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It reminded me of... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Taylor. Okay. It reminded me a lot of Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is cool. <laughs> I'll move on now. <laughs> Taylor's dying. Hold, please. Time to eat. I'm not sure. Is it my turn already? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rick, I thought you were going to talk longer, okay? I'm sorry. Michaela talks less than me. It's true. Right, um, so I enjoyed it a lot, except for one part, but I'll get to that later, so good impression. It's good overall. Alrighty, well that's good. I'm glad that everybody at least liked it. Yes. Alright. Next phase. Initiate. Um, we're gonna do favorite parts now, so Gretchen, you can continue with what you were going to say. Communist wars, guys! <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. They, okay, for the context people who haven't read this book, um, the main character, David, is on, like, this quest to find the king. And he ends up at the house of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Except for Snow White is this fat, mean, crazy lady... Bitch. And yeah. <laughs> um, and then but the seven dwarves are all communists. So they keep making like communist references. And what I did is I tab my books like in parts that I want to talk about. And I have on it's chapter thirteen of dwarves and there's sometimes irascible nature. And I wrote best chapter ever. You can't see that, but it's there. Um, because it is so amazing, and I was actually severely disappointed that they never came back after, like, those two chapters. And I was like, you just took away the best part of this book, and I was not happy with this book again until the end, where he was like, all of the feels, and I was like, eh, maybe you're actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Communist Dwarves, guys, like, best part of this book. Yeah, that, I, like, immediately updated my Goodreads when I got to the part. I was like, Communist Dwarves are a thing right now, guys. Communist Dwarves. <laughs> I only updated my Goodreads about the bestiality. That was yeah. probably awkward. So, can I just say that while I, that was, like, the funniest part of the book, it also seemed completely out of place with every other scene. Oh, no, it was. Oh, it it was. Did. I have a comment about that later, but we were doing favorite parts, and but, that was... So, that you was know, it. I'm, I'm willing to overlook it because it, it was great. Yeah. But it made, made no sense. Yeah. I actually have a sort of a theory about that, um, which I'll talk about later. Um, Why well, don't talk about it now? We're on the topic. Okay. Let um, this flow naturally. Okay. Um, I was just about to do that. Boom. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be that the world is affected by the kid who, like, enters it. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, they talk about that and how the, like, half-wolf things showed up because the previous oh, one was yeah. afraid of wolves. Or rolling. We'll, get, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> it's, it's crazy eyes over there. <laughs> um, I think that that is something that David brought in with him because his father was talking about communism and then he read the book on communism. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it seemed out of place was because that was a recent change based on David's it's coming into the world. And I agree with you entirely. Although if we look, for example, at the knight Roland, he was also influenced by 
David, because we have to here mention to the poem, uh, Child Roland to the Dark Tower came in the beginning. Yeah. So, we have that as well. Yeah, they're, like, they, almost everything that he encounters is yeah. his own creation. Up until, except for the antagonist, except for the huntsman, and except for, like, the wolves. So, like, the beginning stuff, the very beginning stuff was already there, and then the longer he stayed there, the more things got affected by him. I guess it's just weird but, because it was funny. No, but at the same time, like, I wrote that, I already wrote a review for my blog to accompany this video, and, um, it was, it was really weird not really weird, but, like, I see what he's saying, because every single thing that happened to him, like, they all seemed really disconnected. There was, it was just kind of like, we're walking, we're walking, we're walking, and bam! We're walking, we're walking, we're walking, and bam! Another thing! Kind of plot-driven, yeah. Yeah, yeah it really and, was yeah. just, like, one after the other. There was no, like, I yeah. felt like there was no in-between. And yeah. that's... It was all just like, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and there was no downtime for this poor kid. Like, that's either they're really was just like nightmares. Yeah. Which, once again, I think is because the whole point of this book was that he was supposed to face his fears, so he faced every single one of them. Just bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Every single one of the things that have ever bothered you ever are just coming at you all at once. So, shall we move on? That sounds awful. <laughs> yes. Yes. Michaela, give us a new talking point. Um, alright. No, or your favorite part, rather. That's the Yes, one. my favorite part. Um, as weirdly obscure as that one chapter that was talking about the dungeon of the, like, basically Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin's dungeon was really cool to me, and I I went away. That's my face. <laughs> oh, we can still see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was really cool to me. I really enjoyed that. It didn't make sense to me why it was there, because, like, the whole story was sort of us following along David, and then there was just this weird, obscure chapter where we were just like, and now we're learning about all of the things in the dungeon. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but it was cool. Stories. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I really enjoyed that just because it was like incorporating a lot of different things. Second to the communist dwarves. <laughs> Alright, Rachel, your turn. Well. <sighs> I liked I liked any part where it had like somebody telling a story. So I think those were my favorite parts. The stories inside the story. Um, I felt like they gave a really cool twist to something that's timeless. And it really had a lot of relevance to the book. Yeah. So I especially like the one um, with Roland when he's telling a story to those to two little kids. And it's <laughs> and like, oh, they're like, going to be happy ending. And then it ends terrible. It's like, BAM! <laughs> Like, this woman tearing apart the guy that she loves, and I was like, this is a great story. I love this story. <laughs> the one thing that I had with the stories was that a couple of them seemed like they were just put in there because he had them, like, in his head, and he just needed to put them in the book. Like, that, the one that you talked about was prompted. They wanted a story, but, like, there yeah. were other times when a story was just being told to me, and I was like, oh, I guess we're having story time now. <laughs> like, why, why is this happening? <laughs> I don't know. I just really like them. Gotcha. They were good. Again, ones. again, I just... I... Bestiality is what Gretchen's saying. Right. What's wrong <laughs> with a woman laying down with a wolf? It's not that. It's, I'll talk about that later. Taylor has to get to his favorite part, and then I'll start screaming. <laughs> the Dominus Dwarves was obviously very funny, but I really like the part that came after that, where he encounters the woodsman who has, like, taken the head of children and attached them to animal bodies so as to get the best hunt, you know, strong animal bodies and smart people. Yeah. And that whole chapter was just really interesting for me. It was incredibly dark, but kind of cool. And a lot of things tied into it. Yep. It was good. I enjoyed it. I was getting Frankenstein vibes. I was like, dude, dude. It's, um... That wasn't Frankenstein. It would have been the other way around if it was Frankenstein. 
Well, it's, I mean, I said vibes. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. All right. Gretchen, you want to talk about the bestiality? So we'll just leave you <laughs> to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> No, I just was not expecting that. And then it shows up. And this ties into actually a larger point that I wanted to make about um, in the beginning, like he seemed, it seemed like he was writing a really, really good, like 12 year old persona. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we get dropped and like, they're like, bestiality. And then it talks about how like this was made out of the, the king when he was a kid, like his fears. Yeah. And I was like, who as a 12 year old child? Here's <laughs> bestiality. He was like, well, not that guy. Um, but by the time we got to David entering this world, he was already what fourteen. David was like thirteen. Uh, yeah, uh, David was. And I don't, older. I don't remember when the other guy disappeared. It was like the the woman who his dad remarried on, like. Her it was her great father's brother yeah, but I don't know older. like how old he was when he entered the place. But I don't think it was necessarily bestiality that he was scared of. He was scared of werewolves. The story that was what I was going to say. The story changed yeah. in order to accommodate that. He was so of, instead like, of just creating things. werewolves out of nowhere, they had a woman have sex with a wolf and, and then go uh, around and steal other women so that they could also have sex with wolves. But the result was bestiality. <laughs> It still, I, it still threw me Rumpel for a Stilskin, loop. Rumpelstiltskin explained it, though. There wasn't actually any bestiality. That's just the story. The story says yeah. there's bestiality. Rumpelstiltskin said the wolves just started changing. Well, yeah, but that was the story. That, that Okay. But, like, sure. I would have been able to, like, let that go. But then, like, later on with Roland, the crooked man is, like, trying to, like... He does that creepy thing where he's like, he wants to be more than friends with you. And I'm just like... Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. I, yeah. Well, <laughs> Stop all it. of a sudden, it's gone... Saying that anybody is gay is a huge deal. So I think he's just trying to... Oh, yeah. Him. He's freaking out. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Like, I got... But, like, you could have stopped yeah. with the 13-year-old boy at, like, he's gay, he's bad. But then, no, he has to go be a pedophile now. Yeah, because this was set <laughs> Let's... in World War Two era. So. Yeah. Well, obviously, it almost worked since, you know, he almost, like... Yeah, they had, like, a weird, awkward moment. Yeah. Like, a chapter. They were just like, uh... It was so weird. <laughs> I have a post-it note, and I, I was like, isn't he... did a really good job conveying the awkwardness of the situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all of a sudden, it was just, like, with those little things that just all of a sudden were like, Hello! This is gonna happen now. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> Um, Anyways, I'm done now. Yeah, okay. Valid. It was weird. There were a couple things like that. Um, Alright, that was Gretchen's rant. The next talking point that I have written down is favorite characters. Wait, but don't we get least Do you want to rant? You can rant. Go well, for it, I, I don't want to rant, but I have a least favorite part. If okay. no one else does. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so, this whole book, I really didn't have an issue questioning what was going through David's head and what he was doing. I mean, a lot of time he was just being brought around for the ride. Mm -hmm. But I could always believe it. And then there came this scene after the Roland bit when he's riding down Where he the just road, kills those dudes. And he kills those two guys. Yeah. I'm mean, sure they were bandits, but it just seems so yeah, it, out of place. Yeah. It's so awkward. He just, like, and I felt like it was, like, shoveled in there to make a point about like the whole loss of innocence thing yeah and that was how I read that but all of a sudden there's just like two people dead on the ground and I'm like wait it was wait very yeah it, one it was a quick scene and like I wasn't quite sure that he had killed them and then it was like nope he totally killed him and I was like what how are you that skilled you just went flail flail dead guys <laughs> <laughs> well, well. first he reared the horse yeah, and then smashed the other guy and then just slits the other yeah. guy's throat. Okay. You know, no, I had to go back. 13-year-old fall off. 
Yeah. I just kind of like forgot about that part. <laughs> it was probably because I didn't like it. I, it's almost like I just completely skipped that part. I was like, no, this makes no sense, and I moved on. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like, there's those points towards the end. Like, he started out and like, oh, I believe him as a 12, like, being a young kid. I believe this. And then all of a sudden, yeah. like, the second half of the book happened, and it was like, wait. <laughs> I feel like he aged to, like, 20 years old. And I was yeah. like... Yeah. And I mean, but he's I think still the same age, and that was weird. Yeah, and I thought that was like it was like the point they were trying to make, but at the same time, I was just like, eh, there's it's just it didn't. I don't think it entirely worked the way it was intended to work. Yeah. No, I would I would agree. Okay, moving on. Yeah. All right. Favorite characters. Gretchen, communist dwarves. Communist dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess. I mean, it, besides them, probably Roland. But no, I mean, communist dwarves all the way, man. It just yeah, they make me want to be a communist. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good thing. You know. No, not <laughs> actually though. Face. <laughs> All right. I'm doing the college thing and experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> With political life. With communism. <laughs> uh. Alright. Uh, Alright. My favorite character was Roland, and I knew as soon as he became my favorite character, I was like, he's gonna die. And then he died. <laughs> okay. And then he died, and it was just like... Yep. But at least he was reunited with his love in the end. Mm -hmm. was, he he walks in on the yeah, lake. Yeah, at least they were speared in the chest of his love. Next to each other. <laughs> That's as romantic as this book's gonna get. Basically. <laughs> the wolves almost ate him. It was fine. <laughs> Oof. My shelf is too close. Okay, sorry. Okay. Your Who's your favorite character, Rachel? Mine? Okay, I know she had, like, a two-second part, but I really liked Anna. I don't know why. Oh. You know, we, she, like, said five things, if that, but I thought she was awesome. And just, like, a really strong character, too. She was trapped in a jar for, like, what, a hundred years? Yeah. And she's still just like, oh, I only want to see the outside. Oh, I forgive the guy who caused me to be trapped in the jar with no heart. Yeah, and dead. <laughs> just dead. I just, she just seemed so awesome and just so nice. Well, and usually when characters are that self-sacrificing, like, I immediately discount them because I'm like, this is not an actual person. But with her, I was like, oh, I believe it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So Usually, sad. I don't believe it either. Usually, like with the protagonist, if they're all like Superman and Captain America, perfect. I'm just like, yeah, all right, whatever. But with her, I just she just seems so genuine. Yeah. But yeah, Roland was probably my second favorite character, and of course, he died. Yeah. Everybody was dead. Everybody that I liked was dead. So. Everybody was dead. There were very few people who actually made it to the end of this book, except for the woodsman, and he's just like, hey. I actually and, lived. Yeah. And he died well, like really No, the early woodsman on. died. It was just his father waiting for him in the afterlife. I'm Ooh. pretty sure okay, I am so convinced the woodsman died in that he was just imagining and like placing the woodsman in that area because he just wanted him to be alive, and then when he came back into the afterlife, he's just like, Oh, I never noticed. He actually kind of looks like my dad. Yeah, he probably brought him back, because that's how these He things... brought him back to life. The woodsman... No, he died. Because you can influence the story, so he brought him back to life with a plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. He's not actually dead. Surprise! I survived. <laughs> Surprise! I was eaten, but not really. I am an awesome fighter. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. He's good with an axe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just gonna cap this off by saying Roland was probably my favorite character as well because you know he was mentoring, he was friendly, yeah. 
and he was badass, and that's really all we can ask for out of a person. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> the dwarves. This is all around Roland love. Yeah. Roland. Yeah. Um, what did we think of the settings, both the World War Two England and uh, the like weird fairy tale world twistedness? <clears throat> I honestly wish that the World War Two bit had been fleshed out a little more. Yeah, because, I like, wish they had stayed in London. And, not and like his life. dad is a code breaker. Like he's he's yeah. breaking code. Like that's so cool. But then they never revisit that. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> I want to go back to that. I like, could have yeah. been so cool. Yeah. And then like all of a sudden, a plane just drops in his backyard, and we completely forget that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I wish that they had stayed in London, and that we got more art view of actually being in an area that's being bombed to hell. Which makes like that is a more logical. What was that, Taylor? Which makes the escapism more logical. Yeah, it does. Like, then he's not only just escaping from his family, he's just escaping from this world. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like the whole World War angle was totally underplayed. Yeah. To the point where I was like, it really doesn't serve that much of a purpose. Yeah. He was old enough to understand World War, and it made it seem like he didn't understand what was going on at all. I, it actually took me a really long time to actually figure out the time period that it was. Because yes. I was actively trying to figure it out with just clues, and nothing really pointed that way till World War II came up, like, five yeah. chapters in. Yeah. Especially since, I, somewhere in, like, the first couple pages, they mentioned Chamber Pot, and then they, it, like, switched to World War II, and I was like, did they still use Chamber Pots in World War II? It seems that like they my... would have plumbing. Which was weird. And, like, for, like, the next couple chapters, I was still going, wait, chamber pot? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was a whole big part of the reason why when the whole thing with Roland came up and the crooked man was making such a big deal about him being gay, I was still like, what's the big part of him being gay? But then I had to, I had to think about it, and I was like, what time period did he come from? Wait, where? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Gretchen, it kind of looks like you're drinking beer. Not to change the topic or anything, but it looks like you're drinking beer. <laughs> this is Arizona green tea, everybody. Well, I'm sorry, but in that glass even looks like a beer mug. Like <laughs> a stein. It's, it's, and no, then you have, have brown steins. Like. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll ah, my so book. bad. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll eat this Hershey Kiss, which I had to go out and buy because Michaela's no longer here to throw them at me. Yeah. Or me to throw them at you. Yeah, that. But you don't throw very well. <laughs> well. <laughs> Be that way. Yeah, well, I'm going to go get my whole box of chocolate. Shouldn't you stay? You know, we're kind of on air. Meh. We're distracted. <laughs> Meh. Chocolate is always worth it. <laughs> What's the next topic? Guys, we have two. Especially when it's this big. <laughs> Kayla. What? Lead on. Oh, I was just saying that one, we have two. I have right Pop Tarts! Now. Guys, people are actually <laughs> watching us. People are actually watching us. Seriously. <laughs> Wait, people are watching us? Yes. Oh, hi, people. I'm going to give you five bucks. Say hi, Mom. <laughs> I'm on the TV! <laughs> um, next, I was going to talk about the setting. Um, I, I talked about how I was, I like Taylor, was confused for a, a while what time period we were in and wondered if he like went back and forth and his editor just didn't notice that and was like, meh, unimportant. Um, but then I also had the... David was saying how, like, the war was affecting the the magical world as well, because there was, like, that tank that showed up for no reason, and then the plane broke through the tree. Um, but that, like, he never explained why that was. Yeah, the it was plane, never resolved. The plane was explained, but, the, like, the tank was never explained, and there was nothing else from the time period. That was the only thing, and they yeah. just came across and were kind of like, that's weird, and continued. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
the plane followed him through. But the, the tank was just Jay Chillin. The tank was just there and he did nothing else with it, and I was kind of disappointed. I wanted like And it wasn't like something else later on also showed up. Like Yeah, no, I was just gonna God, say there's another yeah. thing. It was I don't I mean, I'm usually really easy to please with world building because as long as I get enough for the plot, I just run on through, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just not gonna think about it. Yeah. But so when I stop and I stare at a page, and I'm just like, what? Why is this here? <laughs> that is a problem. And like, it wasn't like people, it wasn't being used either because they yeah. made it seem like where it was. The they was I just wanted him to like go get the people. tank, like when he was with the huntress who wanted to make him into a fox thing. I wanted him to like go get the tank and like blow her face off or something. <laughs> Or, I don't know. I I just there was a tank, and then there was never a tank fight. And yeah, there, there I don't know. I mean, fight. I don't need like James Bond Goldeneye here. I just need something to happen with the tank. <laughs> and I mean, I I guess it was there just to say, ooh, it's affecting it more now. Real things are materializing. But yeah, but if you're still... gonna do that, you have to do it throughout the story. Right. You yeah. Maybe actually that. use something. Yeah. Like, oh my God, what if in his room instead of a chamber pot he he actually had a toilet he could flush. <laughs> In his room. <laughs> Instead, In place he had of his bed, I description of how terrible it smelled, even with all those flowers. And now he had to hold his breath while he yeah, pissed it was, it into was this weird. chamber pot. It was, it was weird. Actually, it was just a privy in the castle. Uh. Ah. Yeah. Gosh, guys. No, you're plumbing. Medieval plumbing. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't covered in my medieval literature course. <laughs> oh, well, you missed out. It's totally <laughs> on the new Game of Thrones. Right. Um, I don't know about you, Rachel. I think all of my setting stuff has been covered. Um, my setting stuff has been covered, but I don't know if this is the next topic or not, but the writing. Mm -hmm. There were some sentences that took me a while to understand while he, what he was trying to say. Yes. Because he would say, and this, and then, and this, and I'd be like, wait, this person is doing this, or this person is doing I was just, I had to sit and, like, work it out and brain. Yeah. I'm just like, if this is supposed to be considered borderline YA, minus all the gore and the bestiality, then he should be able to write sentences that are understandable. <laughs> I mean, just not even borderline YA. Just like a book you want someone else to read. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's be serious here. Because I was going through it and I was like, I could, I wasn't sure if he was like trying to unsuccessfully like do like prose poetry, or because some of it like some of it really had a rhythm to it, and then other times it was like someone was dropping rocks out of the air, and I was just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> All you English majors. All I noticed was that there were sentences that didn't make sense. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. <laughs> I can does English. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really. I can has grammar. <laughs> no, I suck at grammar. Uh, yes, um, there was definitely some awkward sentence structures. I noticed that too, where I was like, wait, what? Um, and then the other thing about the writing is that he, like, wrote for Snow White's accent, but nobody else. So, like, she had, like, this really terrible accent, but then I had to assume that everybody else talked normally, and I wasn't sure why. It was just to make her seem more gross. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, dialect. I instinctively dislike it. <laughs> I don't know. I think the snoring and the amount of food that she inhaled was enough to make her disgusting. Yeah, it was like, why... But also, why like, the first to... sentence that you heard her say, you just didn't like her. <laughs> I didn't but, like know, her. I don't even like the Disney Snow White, so I was yeah. bound to dislike yeah. her anyways. Me too. <laughs> Wait, you guys tried to kill her? Yeah, and now she has to live with us. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> she survived the point. Honestly, they should have just left in the middle of the night and just, like, to gone which, to live in the woods. To which I have always had a problem with. 
You poisoned her. Poison doesn't make her go to sleep. Poison kills her. <laughs> that's not poison, that's magic. Get your get your get your things right. Dictionary hard. definitions, guys. <laughs> I gave her dwarf dosage for that. <laughs> Oh my god, could you imagine her being shorter than all her fatness would be like... She would just be a ball. <laughs> she would just be a ball of fatness. <laughs> yes. Like, she couldn't even move her arms. She'd be like... Hit me I feel like a Tyrannosaurus oh. Rex. <laughs> she's, um, she's Violet from... Vi yes, oh, okay. Violet. Yeah. Yes. Beauregard. Am I confusing things? That's probably a series of unfortunate events. That's a series of unfortunate events. Um, Can't remember names. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen that in forever. <sighs> I read that book. Doesn't matter. When, when I was little. Events. Yeah. I read every single one. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, I did not uh, read that one. <laughs> it's real dull. I've read it, like, really, really little or not. I love real dull, though. Especially the big friendly giant. Hey guys, remember the book we're talking about? <laughs> hey guys, you remember Tangents? <laughs> we need to change our name. This is actually tangentializing for beginners. <laughs> no! No! The, um. God damn it, I forgot the name. Nitro Hamsters. Yo! The. No, no, no. Don't... Taylor, you were right. It is Violet Beauregard. Awesome. <laughs> I'm finding out this name. It's Beauregard. I just looked Baudelaire it up. Baudelaire. Is, Baudelaire is Sears Unfortunate Events. Because that's French. Yeah. <laughs> ah. ah. We're still off topic of the book you're talking about, guys. Yeah. No, wait. We can't. What are wait. we about to talk about? No. Our name should have been the Bibliomancer Nutmeg and the Nitro Orgasms, but you guys can listen to me. <laughs> so what do you have to talk about? Uh, we just did writing style. Uh, has anybody read anything by this author before? No. No. Would you no. read something else? I'd be open to it. Maybe. I was actually curious. There was another book um, in my library right next to this one with the same kind of cover art. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, this is a standalone, right? That's yes. not related to this one? I don't think no. so. I just found it curious that they use the same cover art style with a book not related to it. Yeah, that I didn't know any better. Yeah. If I didn't know any better. It should be a series. Yeah. Yeah. What Somebody moved my chocolate. <laughs> and it, it wasn't me. Wait, it wasn't you? No. Scandal. <laughs> on the first episode, nonetheless. My parents are supposed to be on a diet. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Your cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nocturnes is the name of that other book. And oh. I believe the reason it has similar cover art is because it's also a fairy tale retelling. Ah, so okay. It's a right. collection of supernatural novellas and stories with echoings of work of some of the masters of the genre. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, anyways, my sister has both of them, and she's read both of them, so... Yeah. I mean, I might read that one. I mean, it wouldn't be, like, a must-read for me. Yeah, no. But... Mm -hmm. it, it was a good book. I enjoyed it. It was fast-paced. But, you know, like we've been talking about, there are, like, several things that yeah. were just kind of, like... No, I'm really glad it was a standalone. Yeah. Yeah. A sequel would have been awful. There, there's nothing to do a sequel with... Okay, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, the ending? Yeah. Where it was, like, mm -hmm. there was, like, that one chapter where it was, like, and then he had a terrible life and everything sucked, but then he died and everything was fine. <laughs> like, how were you... Like, was that just, like, and happy ending or what? How did you guys think about okay, that? I'm sorry, but nobody's lives are that bad. So no, that's not like, true. I, I felt that that was kind of believable. His wife died in childbirth. It, it was. Yeah. It was believable, but all that stuff happening like at <laughs> once to one. I don't know. I just I didn't. It, that was the thing though, was that it didn't happen at once. They just made like his entire life 
half a chapter. And they didn't like everything that. else. I don't know. I just I didn't believe it. I don't know why. That was the one part of the book that actually got me cuz like I don't I don't usually like get emotional over books and I like I never really even feel for the characters most of the time cuz I'm just like reading along and reading along. I really never usually engage with them. But well, then all that stuff it. happened and I was just like no you already lost your other Hey, friend. I made it through the entire Les Mis movie without crying. Okay. I started watching that and I only got like ten minutes in. Okay, so I'm sorry, but he just kept talking about a loaf of bread, and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> that was my point exactly. Okay, so I, I agree. I, I really kind of teared up at the end when he like goes through the tree, and there's his dad, and there's his horse, who was actually the best character. Now that I think about it, <laughs> the horse. Oh yeah. yes, the horse. <laughs> that was sad. But no, like, no ponies. Before that, it was. It did seem a little forced because it's like listing off every terrible thing. There's no mm -hmm. good things. It's just then this person died, then this person died, and then this person died. Well, and it was all telling too, which is always yeah. a problem. Yeah. So it just wasn't. I mean, like... when he went back to the place and the woodsman ended up being his dad, and his horse was there, and his wife was there with his son, I was just like, oh, this is so like fantastic and all the feels. But when they were telling me everybody dying, I was just like, what is this? Like what? See, bad. I'm I'm the opposite of that. I I believed the hardships more than the oh, that's so sweet. I was just like, really, you had to go and be like happy ending, no reason. But well, after that entire book of just like bam, 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 I was just like, okay, sucks. there is happiness <laughs> somewhere, well, even if I only get it for like a paragraph. Yeah. What kind of message did that ending send? Because it's like, okay, you go through all this terrible things, and then once you die, it'll be better. <laughs> oh, Pretty sure that's the Bible. Yeah, I know. Dying should be that's another important. journey. Yeah. It's a bad message. <laughs> all the things you didn't have in life, you get in death. Honestly, this whole book was pretty much a bad message. Yeah. I mean, come on. Don't listen to it, kids. Follow your dreams and don't take no for an answer. <laughs> and if you meet somebody who, like, wants to turn you into a fox human thing, just say no. Just say no, kids. Unless you're following your heart and your dreams. <laughs> and that's what you actually wanted, in which case, continue. You're fine. <laughs> don't let society tell you what's right. The one other thing that I, like, that last chapter was weird for another reason, and that was that it was like, and then he wrote a book about his adventures, and this is this book, you're reading it. Yes! I hate it when authors do that. And I was like, no, it's not, because you're talking to me, and you're not him. Yeah. Yeah. It's and not like no, Tower. That is a pet peeve of mine. I hate that. I hate yeah. it when they say, and you're reading the book that he wrote. Ha <laughs> ha! Like but, it, I mean, and usually when that's done, though, like, I mean, you get that from the beginning, and, like, yeah. you're, you're told in the beginning, or it makes sense, like, like if it's told in the first person, like, and this is me recounting, but this wasn't told in the first person, he was talking about David through the whole time, like, a, and even the way that yes. sentence was phrased, this is the story he wrote, yeah. like, it was, yeah, it was just like, it was like, no, it's not. Yeah. That's not breaking the fourth wall, that's running up against it and falling backwards with a head wound. <laughs> And everyone. Because, oh. like, that, the horror book that I read earlier this semester, was, The Monstromologist, was like the first chapter and the last chapter were in a different time period than the rest of the book because it's like a guy saying, I found this journal and I'm going to put it into a book and here it is. And then the rest of the book is the journal. And then the last chapter is like, There's another journal too that's coming soon. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but like, you have that idea the entire time that the person who started this is not the person that you're reading now. It's, mm -hmm. it's whoever that was happening to. Versus this yeah. is, like, some guy found this book and now is commenting in the last chapter? Why? Like, why and is I mean this last chapter different? Granted, this can work sometimes, because, like, I read Codename Verity by Elizabeth, um, I forget her last name, crap, 
Um, but I mean, and that whole book is in two halves. And the first half of the book is Verity telling the story, but she's talking about herself in the third person, and she's trying to do it more from the viewpoint of another character. Right. And then the second half of the book is actually her telling her own story. And I was like, there is no way this is going to work. I'm going to hate this. And it, it works so well. Like, I mean, that book made me cry. So it can work when it's weird. But yeah. this was just this was just it, yeah. not... It just didn't... It came out of nowhere and was, like, not needed. Yeah. I don't mind different point of views. And I don't mind, like, the whole future and then retelling. Yeah. I just really hate when they talk about, this is my journey, and guess what? It's this book. <laughs> and I'm just like... No, you just just no. Like the movie Atonement did the same thing. You're going through and you're going through and you're watching this movie and then at the end it's just like this woman who's just like, yeah, I wrote this book about my sister. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. All right. I think that's that was all of the things that I had listed. Does anybody else have anything else that they want to talk about? Randomly? Don't do drugs. <laughs> in which case anybody who wants to shout out any sh social media that other people can follow like Taylor and I or Taylor Gretchen and I both have our blogs which this is posted on um, mine's the Pied Piper Coles and hers is my life is a notebook I don't know if you guys want your YouTube channel R Rachel or your Twitter Taylor should people want to contact you because they like your face my Twitter I can put it on my YouTube I just don't know how it's already on my. Google. It's already on my t YouTube. It's fine. But like, if you want people to watch your videos, yeah, I doubt anyone will look at Twitter. So <laughs> you don't know. There's two people watching. Hello, two people. How have they lasted this long? I don't know. <laughs> they must know all of us, because that's the only way. <laughs> I went on Facebook and nobody liked your post, Gretchen, so it's nobody on Facebook. <laughs> nobody liked Gretchen's post? That's terrible. <laughs> How well, dare they not like your then post? Then, if you found this through one of the other places I posted this, that means you're My Life is a Notebook followers, which makes me feel so amazing right now. Um, and then you also know, if you want to tweet at me, I'm ADKWriter15. Um, and if you want to Facebook me, My Life is a Notebook has a Facebook fan page. Um, and my email is also on my blog, so if you don't want to comment on the post that was just made um, about with this, then you can send me an email. I am all over the place with this. Social media gifts. Yes. Also, I would just like to clear up something. A couple of minutes ago, I gagged and made a really weird face <laughs> and then threw something. <laughs> To clarify, it was a licorice jelly bean, and I think those are the most disgusting things ever. So I wasn't just spazzing <laughs> out, I was eating something really gross. Yeah. Alrighty. Oh, um, oh. oh, Michaela, do you want to talk about the book that we're talking we're yes, reading for next that's, week? That's mm. what I was about to do It's now. so good! <laughs> Rachel... Next week is Rachel's Choice. Um, if you can't tell. She's excited. She's holding it up. It's called The Innocent Mage. It's the first book in the Kingmaker, Kingbreaker series by Karen Miller. Um, we're going to be next Tuesday about the same time, maybe not perfectly on at the same time, but about the same time mm -hmm. to continue talking about this book. Um, go out and read it. Go, go ahead and read it. it. And, and just to say, the the main character is a sassy pants. He's so sassy. Woo! I love him. <laughs> sassy. Just sass. Sass um, everywhere. I'm so excited. Because you guys didn't know what book we were going to talk about this week, I think next week we're going to have a Twitter hashtag if you want to join the conversation. Um, and we'll talk about that on our own. And let you guys know at the beginning of that hangout. Yeah, um, ask us questions and stuff. Yeah. I love to interact with people. Interacting yeah. is fun. Guys, guys, we have a YouTube comment. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I quote, this shit needs to be adapted into a film. 
I love you. Person. <laughs> put that on their shoulder. You're my new favorite person. Taylor, this is our new script project. <laughs> it's a go. Great. And this time, you won't have to cut off the ending. Nope. Oh my God. Okay, guys, guys, we should probably end it here. <laughs> yes. Oh. End it on yeah. a sort of strong note. It's a sort of strong note. <laughs> We're commenting on ourselves right now, so before we devour <laughs> yeah. our tail, we should probably just... It's true. We're awesome. Yeah. Right? We'll, we'll see you guys next week, slash two viewers. Yes. Maybe more. Bye.